My name is Kevin Zhu. I'm application engineer at Desktop System. Desktop System is the distributor of Ballet in Southeast Asia. Today, we are going to present using machine learning and deep learning to classify trading signals. Example today is to develop uh, an analysis and system tool to detect trading signal from historical stock data. Just a little bit housekeeping before we started. If you have any question during the presentation, please type them in the chat box. I will bring them up at the end of presentation. We will also have some time for the questions at the end. And kindly remember to mute your mic. After this webinar, you will get a video via email. Last, and very important to us, tell us how we did in the survey. We appreciate your feedback. Before we are looking into our case today, I would like to share an article I read recently. In this article from Harvard Business Review, it summarized forecasting technique into three types. First, it's a qualitative technique. He need qualitative data or expert opinion and information about special events. Second, time analysis and projection. It focuses entirely on the patterns and the pattern changes, and thus relies entirely on the historical data. And last, it's a causal model. It's highly refined and specific information about the relationship between system elements, and is powerful enough to take special event formally into the account. These differences in time that the same type of the forecasting technique is not uh, appropriate to forecast the trend of the stock. Having said that, for example, a technique that relies on historical stock data would not be useful in forecasting the future of the stock in this coronavirus pandemic that has no history and never happened in the historical data before. So as a result from there, a good forecasting technique should combine all these techniques together. It should not only focus or only relies on the historical data. He should also factor in the qualitative information and know how the certain event affect the trend and know the, the knowledge how pandemic uh, coronavirus can affect the stock market. This is our agenda today. So the first part you are going to discuss about using machine learning and deep learning to classify trading signal. How to classify trading signal? Second, how to create machine learning and deep learning models to predict trading signal. Third and last, how to get started. Before we go into more detail, I would like to mention that I'm not here to advocate any particular strategy in trading or any factor or any methodology in trading. Plus, the objective of this webinar is to show you how to build the model, not to show you the model is heavy tested and shared away for you to use for trading. The part two, I will quickly walk you through our new product, Mallet Web App Server. I believe this is our first time introduce this product in our webinar. It's really wonderful, a very wonderful product. I hope you can stay with me until at the end of presentation to understand Mallet Web App Server. Let's start with how would you classify financial data into trading signal. In finance, we always begin with market data. The first step is to retrieve market data from a database or data feed. Once you get the data, Conventionally, what people do is to convert the data into more meaningful contents. For example, calculate the technical indicators based on the open price, close price, volume, and etc. Or you can fit the data into time series model and use the model to give us predicted value. And then, or you also can create a trading rule-based model based on the technical indicator or regression model. The most common trading signal is buy and sell. But you may also classify the data into overweight or underweight, which might be more useful for portfolio management. Nowadays, machine learning and deep learning has been widely used in applications such as trading and investing, risk management, 
but it does not it does not mean that financial model is the traditional financial model is going away soon in fact you can combine machine learning deep learning together with traditional financial model to do your forecasting or your risk management there are three technical terms needed to define here artificial intelligence or ai is the most generic term used to describe synthetic intelligence to mimic human action or decision making next is the machine learning or much we call it as an ml it's a subfield of ai used to enable computer to learn from the data without as explicitly programming to do so last is deep learning deep learning actually is a subfield of machine learning that use multi-layer neural network in the architecture to get the features to get the prediction at the end as the financial data are mostly numeric value most of the time people will prefer machine learning rather than the deep learning let me describe the general uh, workflow about the machine learning here there are two parts here first you'll walk through you talk about uh, training first it will interact till you find the best model take a look here take a look at here after loading the data there are a lot of pre-processing that you can do for example how to filter the data do you consider to use pca if your data is too large or too big do you want to do cluster analysis or do, do you want to understand your data first by a summary statistic method? Later, follow up by the supervised learning, which is on the third step. You can either train classification model or regression model. At the end, you get the model. On the second part, it is prediction. Let's say you have a new data, new input, then go through the same process, same pre-processing and then predicted by the train model and you will get the prediction result the challenge today is let's imagine you are the equity trader the goal is to predict the buy or, or sell signals using machine learning and deep learning algorithm you have you have a data like close price historical data we are looking for supervised learning model and you adopt out of sample back testing as a validation the data that we are going to receive going to use is SRMP 500 okay so we will attract the 10 years of daily cost prices data from this SMP 500 for this step we use data fit toolbox a toolbox available in my lab to retrieve the data and later store the data as a timetable object. Today, we will demonstrate two approaches. First, I will demonstrate how to build rule based model. You are based on one of the technical indicators to decide whether you want to buy the stock or want to sell the stock. The technical indicator mentioned here is RSI uh, 14. The second approach is machine learning. So you use a machine learning method to train a model to predict whether you want to buy and sell. And the last one is deep learning model, which is the LSTM. LSTM is really good in sequencing data like a stock data. So before we go into the approaches, we will walk through uh, pre-processing first before we put the data into our three approaches. In data pre-processing, you will prepare the data for different approaches. Okay, you will do greening, factor creation, reformatting, partitioning the data. So we have a different data set prepared for different approaches. Let me go through my MATLAB to walk you through this process. Here you go. If you are not familiar with MATLAB environment, this is MATLAB environment. So in MATLAB, there are a few different types of the script. Over here, you can see there are script. There is a live script. There's a function. There's a live function. On my screen, this is a live script. So for the live script, you can put the title, the description about your coding, the picture to describe it better, and can break that into the session 
and you also can put your coding here in the coding box. Yeah. So let me uh, run the first session. We are going to retrieve the data for S&P 500. Just double click on, on the blue link, blue bar, then the code is running. And you open up the script for us, another live script. So over here, you can see you are going to import the data from FRED. So FRED is a Federal Reserve Economic uh, uh, Platform. So let me go to the FRED for you to see. So I open my web browser. So this is uh, uh, the FRED. So if you go into the FRED website, then you search for S&P 500. Here you go. So actually you can see the, the index for the S&P 500 here. And take, take note about this. This is a tip, the name of the S&P 500. Just simply copy this and go back to our MATLAB. Here you go. So in MATLAB, you just put the simple name as the S&P 500. Just now what we have copied. And the end date is the end date that we are going to retrieve the historical data is on December 30, 2017. And you are going to retrieve for the period of 10 years. We are going to retrieve the 10 past year data into our MATLAB. So then the next line, create the connection, fetch the data into, into variable T. Let's run this session and see what is happening. Once you success run the session, your variable will be appear on the workspace. So you open the T and the data is stored here. Here you can see there are two columns. The first column represents the time, but now the time in, is in the date num format. And the second column represents the price. So we are call, going to call, we are going to convert the date num format into a proper date time format for us. So over so the next slide, we are going to use a function take time to convert from take num format and assign this to the variable time. And you also retrieve to attract the data, the price data and assign them to the prices. Okay. And after this step, you are going to use a timetable format. This is a very wonderful data type format available in MATLAB to deal with a timetable. So you put our time in and the prices in and assign to T. The timetable format is really very rare. You can see in open source. Yep. After this step, you can see actually your result is in a wonderful timetable. The first row is a time. The second row is a price. Let's move to the next step. This is a data pre-processing. So on this step, you can see you are going to do some cleaning create some factors for machine learning or reformat the, reformat the data or partitioning the data into in-sample data set and out-of-sample data set. Let's open this script. So the first step, what are you going to do is we are going to clean the data. Let's open the timetable again. You can see in the timetable, there are missing data. So missing data usually happen on non-trading day or public holiday. So we are going to remove the not missing data if this many command out and missing so after this step you can see the missing data is gone the nan is gone here and the next step we are going to create a factor so if you are familiar with ai you know there are differences between machine learning and deep learning machine learning you need to have a certain domain knowledge to attract the factor for the machine learning to trade but deep learning you no need to extract the factor. It has the automatic uh, factor uh, creation. So you extract the factor automatically by its neural network itself, but machine learning cannot do that. So over here, you are going to create the factors for machine learning or the predictor for the machine learning. So what are you going to do if you are going to get the take time factor? 
okay i refuse the dead time is one is my might be one of the factor to affect the market trend in the stock data so what are you going to do for the first time you are going to get the year the month and the day by this function and the second dead time factor you want to get perhaps i maximize this for you so you can see the code clearly a bit all right so here the second column we are going to take is a day of the week so usually we believe on the first day of the stock market people are more energized people are more willing to, to buy rather than sell and on the last day people are last day of the week like friday people are more willing to sell than buy so we, we believe this one is one of the factor that's why we got going to consider this factor by using the function called day so let's say the sunday you put one monday you put two and etc until uh saturday and the next one you are going to uh, retrieve the factor is the number of days to the next trading day and the number of days from the previous trading day. If you are too far away from the last trading days, that means there are a few days you are not in the trading days, people might be eager to trade. We doesn't know about this. We believe this might be one of the factors affect the stock market performance. So we are going to consider this factor into our account. Let's run this section, then you can see now the timetable is as 10. There's a Y, the year, the month, the day, the, the day, day of the week, the next trading day, the last trading days. How far away from the last trading days? So the next one, we are going to generate the price related indicators. So this one definitely is about the technical indicator. If you are familiar with, with stock, you know there are technical indicator and fundamental indicator. Now over here, you are only considered technical indicator. So the first one I'm going to generate is an end day returns. Let's say I buy the stock today. What is the percentage of return on the next day, on the next five days, on the next 10 days, on the next 20 days? I design a function for this process. I call it as an end day return, and this function is defined at the end of the script here. So we can see this is a function. Let's go back to here. And the second one I'm going to do is I going, I'm going to calculate the RSI. So I will calculate the RSI 7, 14, and 21. Okay. So I will use a method in build function available in financial toolbox called RS index. Help me to calculate the seven day RSI, the 14 day RSI and 21 days RSI. And the next one I'm going to consider is MACD. It's also a very famous uh, technical indicator uh, as, a, as a stock trade always look at. So over here, you use another input function available in financial uh, toolbox to help us to get the MACD uh, technical indicator. So now we run this session and see what is the output. So over here, you can see our timetable is expand even more columns. So the first one is a return, the next day return, the next five day returns, the next 10 day return, RSI. You can see this RSI 20, 21, 7, 14. Sorry, this is a return. So RSI 21st is here and MACD. Okay, the next one you are going to generate the the signal you want to buy or want to sell. So the the condition and the criteria that we generate the response is, if let's say the next day return is positive, then you are then today you should buy. If let's say the the return is negative, then you should you should sell. You should sell today. So you I will generate the response based on this criteria. So now you can see after this session you can see there's one more column which is a response in the time table so you should buy today you should sell today you should sell today you should sell today you should buy today you should sell today so take, take a look at the, the the response so if let's say we summarize or some summation up mm -hmm. all the buy response in our data set and summarize up all the sell response in our data set you can see our data set is imbalanced. We have a buy signal more than a sell signal. Just take note about this first. Okay, the next one you are going to talk about uh, to split the data. Okay, so you assign the data to S and Y. 
Okay, S is our predictor and Y is our response. So in the timetable T, from the first column until the last two column, N negative minus one is going to be assigned into S and the last going to be assigned into Y as a predictor. The last column is a predictor, is a response. So the last column is a response, not a predictor. So the last column will be assigned to the Y. So this is what this session is doing about. Let's close this. So now we have the factors for machine learning. You also have the time series close price for LSTM. Okay, the next one, you are going to partition the data. So why you want to partition the data? Because you want to break the data, the in sample and the out sample. In sample, you will take part of the in sample data for training because you want to make the data set balance. And out sample data, you are used for the validation to really validate our accuracy of our train model or our rule based algorithm. Okay, this is what this session is going to do. Let me open this. Yeah. Over here, you can see uh, in one year, there are approximately 252 days for trading. And you are going to use the last two years. We got 10 years historical data. The last two years will be used as our out of sample bad testing data set. Okay, and the first eight years will be used as a in sample data set. So we get the index of this out sample data set and the in sample data set and we and the next step we break uh using the index to break the the time table t into the in sample and out sample data set here okay we do the let me run this yeah. and and this one you want to attract the next day return so as what I mentioned before, right, the criteria is let's say on the next day return is positive, the price is going higher, then you should buy today. If the, on the next day return the price is going down, then you should sell today. So you'll get this information as a response. So for why uh, return in sample and why return out sample. So later you'll use this one to validate the, the accuracy. And for the demo two. Okay, our approach to, we are going to partition the data for demo to machine learning. So actually, as what I mentioned before, that we realized the buy signal and the sell signal are in balance. So we are going to balance them up. So what are we going to do is, we will randomly get some data from the buy signal until he reached the amount, which is a 636, same as a sell signal. So this is what the code here going to do. At the end, you are assigned the balanced data set to training sample. Then this training sample data set will be used to train machine learning model. Yeah, pretty cool. Let's next to the next one, which is the LSTM. And LSTM, uh, let me emphasize this one uh, once again. Machine learning will use all the factor here. This is a factor going to use for machine learning, but LSTM is not going to use them. LSTM will only focus on the close price data, the time series for close close price data, then you will attract the features by itself. You don't need to tell the features or the factor and fit into the LSTM. Much deep learning, you are automatically to attract the features by itself. Okay, what are we going to do here is, you also will break the sample into the training data set and Y data set. Y is a response by itself. Okay. And here, what is the difference is we are going to standardize them. We standardize the the close price data. Let me run this and I open up the data set for you so you could understand uh, better. So you open the S shell and Y train. Let me put them into side by side. Yeah. So this S train and the Y train is going to be a data set that we fit into the LSTM. So you, over here, you can see there's a 14 times one double for the first row. And this we need to sell based on our data set. So what, why, why is a 14 times one? Yeah, so you need to understand the LSTM structure. So LSTM is a sequencing input. So what are we going to do is we, are, we tell the LSTM the past 40 days is important. This is going to decide by yourself. You want to take the past 30 days into the LSTM also can. But over here on this example, you're going to take the past 14 days. So this cell signal, you're based on the past 14 days 
price data. And this value has been standardized and normalized. Okay. So your so the far, your, later you tell the LSDM, this past 40 days is a features. So we have a 14 features for LSDM. All right. Let's close this. Just bend your mind that machine learning you need have qualitative data which is the technical indicator to train the neural network, to train the machine learning model. But deep learning, you no need to have qualitative data. You just put the price in. You no need to have a technical indicator. The, the, the date time factor, you just put the price in, then you'll train the neural network for you. All right, let's go back to my, my, uh, my PowerPoint here. So actually, I recorded my, uh, my step in video in case anything's go wrong during my presentation though, so that I can play the video for you to see. So, but it's going well, so let's go to the next step. So the next one, you'll create the rule-based model first. Okay. Yep. So we are, now we are going to create a rule-based model. Then you go back to my MATLAB once again and close the, uh, the thing and open up the first script, the rule-based trading model. Right. and load the data set that you are prepared for first approach. What is the criteria that you are going to do? Yeah, now it's, it's getting more interesting. So for this uh, rule-based model, we don't bother any other technical indicator except 14 days RSI. Okay. If the 14 days RSI less than 30, then we buy. If the 14 days RSI more than 70, then we sell. So this is like very general uh, technical indicator that that trader will, will consider. So less than 30, you call it as a oversold, more than 70, call it as, a, as a over overbought. Then you use this RSI 14 to generate the signals, the, the, uh, the trading signals. So supposed to buy or sell. So let's take this in sample. You can see actually in sample, there are a lot of things but you don't really consider them. You only consider our SI14. So that's why you can see in sample dot our SI14. Okay, this is only the criteria that you consider in the rule based trading. And after this, I do some mathematic calculation to calculate the sharp ratio. Okay, sharp ratio is uh, a very common uh, evaluation indicator to tell us how, how we perform on the, on the trading. So in the short ratio here, you can see the result actually is 50%. That's mean, if let's say 50%, that's mean you are, you, you earn 50% at the end of this period, at the end of the in sample period. So let's visualize the equity curve with an initial portfolio value of one. Let's say your capital is one, you got $1 here. Then if you adopt this rule-based uh, trading algorithm, then actually you can see your uh, capital is moving, is gaining, is progressively increasing in your capital. Okay. At the end of the uh, in-sample period, actually you, your capital is increased by like 1.2. Okay. And let's... A, uh, take a look at the out of sample data. So out of sample data, let's run this. We same, same as you are using the same uh, criteria. If let's say 14 days, less than 30, you are going to, to buy it. You sell, if let's say the RSI 14 days is more than 70. And create the signal and calculate the, the shop ratio. So over here, you can see actually the shop ratio is not, not really good. Yeah, for the out of sample data, out of sample, you have a two years data set. So that's me in, this, in these two years, you're only able to earn 4.8%. Yeah, it's really slightly higher than the interest rate if you put into the fixed deposit. So over here, you can see this is the uh, equity curve, if let's say the portfolio is one. So at the beginning, actually if you follow the, this algorithm, you are losing the money at the beginning. Okay, and then after that, you are slightly gain the money and then lose again. Then at the end, you get around 4% gain uh, at the end of the period. Okay, so this is a low base trading. Let me close this and go to my presentation slide again to see the next one.
So the second one we are going to discuss is a machine learning model. So machine learning model, you will consider the factors, the dead time factors and the technical indicators. Okay, let's go to my uh, again to, wish, to walk you through how to build a machine learning model. and load the data first, the data that we prepare for machine learning. Over here, I have, I, I really like this feature very much in MATLAB, which is we have a lot of GUI application help you to walk through the process without a lot of coding. So in MATLAB, there's a GUI application to build machine learning model. We call it as a classification learner app. Okay. Since our application is classification learner, actually we also have another app, which is a regression learner app. So you just simply go to the, on top the, the tab, uh, looking for the apps, then search for classification learner. Here you go. Then the apps will be opened up. Then you suppose can see this. Okay. Yep. Let, uh, load the data first. So actually our data is in the workspace, which is a training sample. All right, and you go back to the classification learner and create a new session and load the data from the workspace. Which is, here you go, and select the training sample. And our response is our response. Our response inside got two category, categories, which are sell and buy. And the less is our predicted Y, M, T, day of width, and etc. A lot of predicted and technical indicators. And over here, you can see there's a validation. So if you want to know about more validation, you can speak to us after the webinar. So validation means that you're going to break the data into a two part. One is the training, the other one is going to validate the algorithm. Okay, there are two different kinds of validation uh, mesh, uh, indicated here, cross validation and whole out validation. So we are going to select the cross validation. With, uh, five folks. Let's start the session. Yeah, here you go. So, let's, let's wait for a moment for the uh, classification learner to load data. And, okay, here you go. So, actually, if let's say your data set is two bit, you can apply the PCA if you want. But I'm not going to apply the PCA because I, I, I feel our data set is not really big, just uh, maybe 20 column, which is which is a reasonable for machine learning to train. So let's say if you but you if you are really particular on a certain category accuracy, because for example, you more concerned about the buy rather than the sell, actually you can put the different misclassification cost. Okay. If let's say you want to make the buy signal more accurate the, than the the sell signal. You can implement different class mix classification costs. There you go. So here, for example, you can put two. Yeah, you put higher penalty for this category compared to the less. So, but I'm, I'm going to balance them up today. So I will just put one and cancel this. The wonderful part of this application of this GUI is you can train all the model at once. So you no need to hate it. What is the best machine learning model for your application? So you just quickly train all the model and see why is the best. So over here, you can see there's a decision tree, there's a discriminant analysis, logistic regression model, naive Bayes classifiers, support vector machine, nearest neighbor classifiers, and uh, assemble classifiers. So in the assemble classifier, you can see like nearly formless model like boosted tree, the VAT trees, uh, and the RUS boosted trees. Okay. You can train your machine learning together, machine learning model together with a parallel computing. If let's say your computer has more than one CPU core, so let's say your computer has a two CPU core, actually you can train two models simultaneously at one time to speed up the training progress. But today I'm not going to activate this. And here, you can select to train all the model as mentioned before, but I don't want you to wait too long for the training process. So I only need to train the quick model, quick to train model. So the monster will spend uh, not a lot of time to train. So I select this, train, I, 
I'm going to play to train the model now. So once the training started, you actually can visualize here the history. Okay, you can see now the computer is training on the first model. Yeah, and the first model achieved fifty one point four percent based on our validation data set. All right. So at the end of the training, you are helping to select the best accuracy. Other than this, actually, you can see more information in this call in here. Okay. You also can visualize the confusion metric to see, to evaluate the performance of your model. Let me click on the confusion metric. Uh, here you go. So you can see actually for this is a predicted class, this is a true class. So 352 are correctly predicted. So, but this one, we predict as a buy, but actually they are belong to sell. So we are doing the long prediction. Okay. And you also can uh, analyze the ROC curve. A lot of people like to see ROC curve for especially data scientists. Yeah. All right. Other than this, you can export your model back to the workspace or generate the function for your the step begin done in this step. So you have to generate the MATLAB code that begin done in this application, begin done in this GUI application. So, but over here, I'm going to select, export the model back to the workspace. So you can see, I will name the model as a train model one and click OK. Now, go back to my workspace. Yep. Since our exported model is a decision tree, is a fine tree, so actually you can visualize the, the branching structure of this decision tree. And our train model is here. The train model one is the model that we exported from our classification learner. So in addition to you can see actually the algorithm put MACD as the most important and priority uh, criteria to break them. So if MACD less than this amount negative 0.1.787, you'll go to this branch. MACD more than this amount, you'll go to this branch. If the year before 2014, you'll go to this branch. If the year after 2014.5, you'll go to this branch. And the next one, over here, you look at the RSI 14. Over here, you look at uh, return on the next five days. So at the end, branch, 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 until at the end, you tell you you should buy or sell. This is the algorithm that train in decision tree. All right. So the next one, you are going to validate our train uh, model with our in sample data set and out sample data set. So we will do some bad testing. So you, first of all, you do the in-sample bad testing. So you use our model to predict our in-sample data and tell us the result buy and sell. And after that, we use shop ratio to compare the performance again. So for in-sample over here, you can see the shop ratio is 1.17. Well, it's really high. Actually, it's really high. That means if let's say your capital is $100, now you are going to get another $117. So you, you, your capital becomes 217 Yeah, this is an example. So if you look at the equity curve for compare the low base trading and the machine learning with an initial portfolio value one, you look at the curve. So if let's say the low base trading, which is a blue color line, at the end, you only able to earn 4%. But the machine learning, we already have you to earn a lot of money. The algorithm like able to have you to earn uh, 100, 100, uh, 17 percent uh, at the end of the period. So you implement the same uh, validation on the out of sample data set. Usually, out of sample data set, you will have a uh, lower, uh, lower accuracy result. This is because we, we take part of the in-sample data set for train, training. So the train model will have a little bit overfitting to the in-sample data set. So it's working well on the in-sample data set, but doesn't working well, doesn't mean working well on out of sample data set. This is a common issue for machine learning and deep learning. So let's take a look on validate our train model, machine learning train model if out of sample data set. 
So we are going to see the shop ratio as an indicator. So for the out sample data set, actually you only able to earn 72% instead of 170%. And you look at the equity curve, compare the rule base and the training and the machine learning, actually you can see just now the what what can we gain is much higher than, than now. If let's say your capital is one, then at the end you will get at the end of the billion you get the capital around like 1.16 yeah around more than 60 percent around 60 percent you can gain yeah at the end or something like that okay so this is a machine learning let move on to talk about let me close this one first and let move on to talk about deep learning okay so the the sorry for this yeah. So now the last demonstration that I'm going to demo today is how to use, how to build the deep learning model, especially LSTM. So as we know, like the deep learning model, we do, we heard a lot about CNN and CNN uh, basically is more, is, is working on the image data. So let's say you, are, you want to work in on the time series data, numeric data, maybe you can consider LSTM as your choice. Okay, let's go to the MATLAB and walk you through how to build uh, LSTM deep learning model. Okay, I close this demo and uh, don't save this and go to the, the last demo, which is the uh, LSTM. All right. First of all, load the data that you prepare for the LSTM demo. Here, uh, allow me to spend a little bit time to explain you the architecture of neural network and the hyperparameters. So in LSTM architecture, you can see the first layer, we are going to assign sequence input layer and number of the features. Okay, so actually the number of features is 14 because you want to consider the past 14 days as a features as what I mentioned before. But this one you can modify by yourself. And the hidden unit is a neural network unit. We are going to tell you, you do thousands, but this basically is something like try and error. You doesn't know whether thousand is the best or not. But let's say if you thousand is not the best, you can put 500. And the output mode is last. So we are going to give one output, which is like either buy or sell. And a fully connected layer over here with two because you only got two categories, buy and sell. So put two, let's say you got three categories, you can put three. And softmax layer will help us to calculate the possibility of uh, different categories. Like maybe buy is 70%, sell is 30%. Then the classification layer, you'll choose the highest, pop, uh, highest pos the probability. Okay, I, I believe it's, it's pretty much, it, it, it's, it's quite clear uh, about this neural network architecture. Then there's a training option. Training option are uh, people call it as a hyperparameters. So there are a lot of hyperparameters in the neural network, but just bear in your mind that only a few we are really concerned and, uh, and, uh, and they, they, they are important to us. So first of all, it's a solver. So solver, you can select like Adam, stochastic gradient descent, and the learning rate is also very important. Okay, so over here I have specified 0 0.01. The minimum batch size is important. You put 100, and the maximum epoch is also important. You put 10. Okay, if you want to, un want to understand the hyperparameter in more detail, you can speak to us. Then you try to see whether you have a time explained to you in detail. And let's run this session. All right, so in MATLAB, there also a GUI help you to build neural network easily so actually the gui is called deep network designer you can see at my my command window i tap deep network designer then the gui will be prompted out oh, maybe wrong spelling yeah, so here you go so over here you can select some between neural network but most of them i think all of them are cnn neural network architecture so it's not lstm so now we are going to visualize the the neural network that we designed in the in the in the MATLAB. So just import the neural network from the MATLAB, and now you can visualize them. So you can see this uh, architecture of your neural network. So on your left hand side, there are a lot of layers of neural network. You can just drop and design by yourself. So for example, if let's say I feel this neural network is not deep enough, okay. So this is where the deep learning concept coming from. 
So it's not deep enough. Actually, I can. What I can do is I, I put multiple LSTM layers. Okay. And put again the fully connected layers. And then I just need to connect the, the layers accordingly. So now we can see actually my neural network is deeper. Yeah, you go through two LSTM. Yeah, you can do your research as such way. Yeah, this is one of the recommendations you can do, but this time that's because this is not direct output, so actually you can change the output size to other number and the fully connected layers, the last fully connected layers must be same as your number of categories. All right. But I'm not going to, to do to change the neural network to change our application with this neural network. Uh, you'll stick to our original one, which is this. And the next one, after you have uh, designed your neural network well, so you are going to train the neural network uh, as chain data, the 14 days in one column, 14 days in one column, the past 14 days historical price data, close price data, and the Y chain, the response, the neural network architecture layers here, and the hyperparameter option. Just double click on this column, then the training progress will start. Let's wait a while for the training progress to start. If you have any question, you can type your question in the chat box. I will attend your question at the end of my presentation. Yeah. As you can see, actually I'm training on the GPU device here. Maybe the wording is too small, you cannot see gear little. Killer, but actually I'm training on the my GPU device. Yep, and this is a training progress. So let me maximize this window so you can see the training progress better. So on top of this figure, there's an accuracy. It tells you how much accuracy you achieve along the e-box. Okay. And this is a loss function. Loss function, so it tells you the loss uh, indicator that along the e-box. So just now we, uh, we like, Specify you want to print 10 e box, so you end at the 10 e box. Yeah. Now it's already leashed like the number seven e box. So let's wait another more e box, then you will complete the training progress. So, unluckily, you can see over here if let's say you solely based on the price indicator, the past 14 days, you, you only can achieve like 50 more than slightly more than 50% accuracy at the end. Uh, you can see here. So let me close this. This now is completed. We have completed the training. Let me close this window and go back to my manage script. And see, over here, our neural network has been trained. It's assigned to the dot net. It's assigned to a net variable. So we are going to use this net variable to do our back testing uh, uh, validation with in sample data. And at the end, we evaluate. This bad testing result is a shock ratio again. Yeah, let me run this. So over, over here is all give you some uh, the confusion metric to visualize how how the neural network perform on certain categories. Okay. Yep, so the shock ratio we achieve 40, 0 0.42 to uh, 92, that's me 42.92 percentage. So if let's say you are going to earn 42% based on your capital. So we look at the equity curve and compare three demo. Let me run this again because the figure is not opened up properly. Okay, here you go. So if let's say you compare these three, three uh, strategy for, for the in-sample bad testing data set, the loop base is the worst, uh, the worst uh, algorithm or strategy, then follow up by the LSTM and the best one is a machine learning. So actually, if you have domain knowledge, you put more domain knowledge into your training, he really can help you to achieve better result. Yeah, that's why people always call it as a qualitative features, qualitative features. You, you need to have a domain knowledge to increase the, the accuracy. And the bad testing, the strategy of sample, yeah, let's run this. 
see what is the performance of the LSTM. Actually, you can see for the out of sample, if you follow the LSTM algorithm, you are going to lose money 10% at the end of the period. Okay, so look at the equity curve. Yeah, you can, I believe you can see that actually LSTM is below, negative, below one. That means you got hundred dollar, you're going to lose ten dollar for it. If you follow this strategy at the end of the video, you at the end of the video, you'll lose ten dollar. Yeah, that's all for my my demonstration on MATLAB today. Let's go back to my PowerPoint point slide. So uh actually in my summary, you can uh we, we are comp now we are comparing the three different approaches. So the demo first, the first demo, the loop based trading, you only use 14 days RSI. The machine learning, you use a lot of date time indicator and uh, technical indicator RSI, MACD, number of days and returns. And But LSTM, you only solely based on the base, the last 14 days. Okay. And you can see actually for the demo one, it's really easier to create the trading signal, only one line. That's made more than more than uh, less than 30 you buy more than uh 70 you sell kind of thing and machine learning there's a gui application help you to train the classification learner and lstm you need to design the layers the new the architecture the lstm architecture and specify the hyperparameter but actually it doesn't involve a lot of coding so but 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 the pretty you need to have a certain extent about the to understand about deep learning so you only can apply the Deep learning well in on your application. Yeah, so as what I promised before that we are going to demonstrate you another new product which is Malab Web App Server. I believe this is our first time introduced to our customer. So what Malab Web App Server do? If you're familiar with uh, App Designer, yeah, so you can design your GUI after you train the model. After you you get the train model, you can design the GUI. The, G, the front end GUI in MATLAB with an app designer. Then after that, you publish to the web application. So for example, the user open the, the URL, URL link, the HTTPS link, then you'll go, you'll see this page. Okay, then you select your application. And then open up and do the application uh, that you design accordingly. So you doesn't need to pass your algorithm, pass your everything to your user. You just pass the URL link to the to your end user, and then your end user access your application through the URL link. Yeah, this is a very exciting exciting new product, and we, I have success one customer uh, on the last month to to use this product. So I'm proudly to introduce you about this. So uh, um, before I end my presentation, I would like to get some recommendation for my future webinar in finance. So I give some example, like, do you want to heard about portfolio optimization? So portfolio optimization is basically like you group a bunch of uh, stock data and then do some portfolio optimization, like how much you buy for the stock one, how much you buy for stock two. So this is so-called portfolio optimization. Or you want to see something like lead enforcement learning to, to forecast the stock price. This is that is really new, especially in R and D. And or you want to heard more detail about LSTM theories, hyperparameter hyper tuning, and the use case on the finance. Or we also got one new topic, which is AI in the risk management and the risk analysis. We are happy to help you to gather to gather the the information from the audience and to see which one is the more suitable. Uh, for the web, for the public webinar, then we are happy to to host the uh, this uh, topic for for our future in in our future webinar. Before I uh over here, we are we really value your feedback. You help me personally to improve my presentation. Also help my company to to deliver the right topic to the audience. So please scan the QR code to complete a survey so that we can continue to improve our future webinar. I will stop here for like 30 seconds for so that I believe you have sufficient time to scan your QR code. Uh, no worries about this. Like, let's say you could not scan your QR code within these 30 seconds, then uh, our marketing team, uh, after this webinar, our marketing team will send a summary uh, 
to you and inside the summary there's a link uh for 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 you to to feedback to us about our webinar. Okay, time's up for this 30 seconds. <laughs> let's move further to tell you more information that how can we help you in the future so let's say you are not familiar with MATLAB algorithm you can go to the MATLAB online it is totally free for you to get on board with MATLAB uh, language MATLAB algorithm and etc and you also got some free course like deep learning online simulating online step four online but if let's say want to find financial relevant uh training I, I recommend you to consider Meta Online and Deep Learning Online. And you also provide on-site training, hand-on workshop, and some formal training classes. It could be public classes or online training or custom on-site training. It's really up to you to uh, talk to us. Okay, you also provide consulting services. Yeah, so you provide uh, consulting services to your certain application. Talk to us if you are looking for consulting. You don't want to do everything by yourself. You want our help to build the application, to build the system. Uh, at the end of my presentation, this is our technical support. So what really uh, differentiate us and others commercial, I, I'm not sure how others company perform, but we really put a lot of effort to do technical support. So your email, you really you have quick, quickly to attend your email and then uh, reply as what you can or work together to build the workflow to en en enable your project. Yeah. Great. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate your time being here. Thanks again for joining us today, and we will see you next time. Oh, sorry. If let's say you got, let, let me look at the chat box, see if any question do you have. I have one question. Uh, let me repeat the question again. I have a, the question is, I have a couple, uh, oh, sorry. What, what is the toolbox requirement on this process? Is it fit to the large data? For instance, the transaction more than 10 uh, BN customers. Is there any gradient boosting uh, machine learning algorithm? Great. So uh, the toolbox required for my example today is, uh, MATLAB, the basic MATLAB, uh, machine learning and statistic uh, toolbox, deep learning, parallel computing. Yeah, I only involved four toolboxes today. So does it able to fit the large data? Uh, I didn't apply the large data technique today. MATLAB have data, data store. If you go to our documentation, you look at data store function. Yeah, this is a function to host large data and later fit into the machine learning to train. I, I hope my answer my answer clear your, your, your question. So is there any gradient boosting machine learning algorithm? Yes. So when you open up the uh, classification learner or regression learner, you can see at the end of the section of the model, the available model, you can see that there are and ensemble model. Ensemble model is a gradient boosting machine learning algorithm. It's like okay. Uh, there's another question. Is there a way to combine machine learning and LSTM methods so we can leverage domain knowledge and also time series strength of LSTM? Yes, you can do it. So people call it as an ensemble model. That means you got one model, machine learning and second model LSTM. So the result of the two model, how to combine the result of the two model? Yeah, so there are a few techniques involved. The most easier one is like take the average, take the average of them like the machine learning model contribute 50%, LSTM model contribute 50%. This is the most easier one. And then the second way you can put a weight, like maybe you feel machine learning model is more accurate then you put 70%, then LSTM you put 30%. But there is there are also more advanced than it how to combine uh, different models together. So you, you, this, this kind of application is called an ensemble, ensemble model. And the advanced way is that you can put a little one more model, one more machine learning model, or any, or you can consider fully connected layer, how to combine the both results together. Yeah, so yeah, 
So I, I hope my answer helped you. So maybe you can try to Google like something like an example model in MATLAB. Mm -hmm. Uh, as what I remember, there's a good article uh, in Medlab blog talking about this. Yeah, reach out to us, then reach out to us, let my marketing know about it, then I will send the article to you for your study. Yeah. Is there any question uh, on the chat box? Yeah. Okay. Uh, if there's a no more, it, it doesn't have any more question, then I will end my presentation today. But no worries about that. Let's say you got any question, you can always reach out to us, then we are, we are happy to help you. So now it's 4 p.m. And it's it's just a, it's a, it's just a, because our presentation is going to end at 4 p.m. So it's, it's a, it, I, I really, we managed the time well. So see you guys later. Bye.